Hello and welcome to this little tutorial about how to use SketchUp for comics. A little disclaimer beforehand, this is just a tutorial about using SketchUp for comics, not the tutorial on how to use SketchUp for comics, because there are so many ways and so many tutorials out there to say that any one of these would be the only tutorial you should use uh, would be conceited. <laughs> so this is just how I do it. And I do it a little convoluted, but this is the way I made for myself to look best with my drawings. So to use this way, you need four programs in total. Don't worry, not all of them cost any money. <laughs> First off, you will need SketchUp, of course, which um, version of SketchUp you use is mainly completely irrelevant because anything that I show you today will be possible with the free version of SketchUp. The second program you will have to use is a little program that is called PhotoSketcher, which is also free. You can, however, give a coffee to the maker of PhotoSketcher, which um, I think is very nice and I've already done several times because it's a very, very nice little program. The third program you will need um, is Illustrator, which is, yes, it's Adobe Illustrator, so it comes with a price tag. Um, however, there are alternatives to Illustrator that I believe can do the same that I will show you today. How exactly they can do it, you will have to find out for yourself because I can't really try out every program there is to make vectors um, just for the sake of this video. So I will use Illustrator because I have it and you will have to see for yourself how to emulate what I'm doing in different programs like Inkscape and um, whatever is, is available to you. Um, the fourth program and the main program I do my comics in is Clip Studio. Of course, you can also switch out Clip Studio for any other alternative that is free. Um, I would recommend getting Clip Studio at one point in your artistic career as a comic artist, because in my opinion, it is the best program to work um, on comics. And seeing as it is a one-time purchase that is not that expensive, I would just save up 20 bucks, wait for at most three months because they have a sale every three months or so and then just get it. So let's get into the meat of this little tutorial. First we will start with SketchUp. I've opened a file already that I've made for one of my comics. So this is basically what you have when you open a file in SketchUp. Usually you have the view set to um, shaded with textures. I apologize that my SketchUp is in German. My system language is German and I can't for the life of me find out how to change the, the, the language in this version of SketchUp. So we'll have to do with me simultaneously translating all the menus to you. So this is what you get most of the time when you open a model in SketchUp. So there are no lines. Um, the view style is set to shaded with textures. So there's only colors and textures, no lines. And that's fine for us at the moment. Um, so imagine you have a panel and you want to put a background in there. If you have um, characters in this panel, then you will have to fit the background to the characters. Um, which is a little a little finicky at times and I will make another little video tutorial on how to use another little nice program which is called peek through to um, better fit your backgrounds to your foreground or put your your background behind your um, characters that you already drew but this is not this for now we'll just focus on how to get this background into Clip Studio and make it look good. So if you want to move around in your model, you can do so by either using the Orbit tool, which makes the, which turns the whole model around on whichever point you you pick. Usually, if you see if I if I click in here in the background and turn start, start turning, it starts turning around the background, and if I click here on this little flower pot and start turning it turns around the flower pot so you have a little more control depending on where you click the hand tool just moves 
up, down, and to the side. You can use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. So this is sometimes a little, a little finicky. The zoom tool does the same. This tool here, I don't, I won't click it now. This will just zoom out to show you everything that is in the file. And this little eye tool is also very, very neat. You can just, you are fixed to where, to your position, but you can look around. And with these tools, you can move around in your model until you have the perspective that you would want to show in your panel. So I want to show this part of the apartment with the plant in the foreground. So we have some, some 3D space to make a background for a panel or a comic page. You need three files, basically three images of the same thing, but with different styles. So this is actually what we want for the first file, the base file, the texture file. So we go to file, export, 2D graphic, and then we decide on our folder where we want to save the files. We call this one temp texture because this is our texture file. Now, before you export anything, go to options. Um, this new little window that opens up will give you some options how big the file will be that we will export. Um, it's not advised to use this one here, which is just the viewport. It's because it's, it's quite small. And if you want your comics to be possibly printed in the future, you want it as as big as it's possible without breaking your computer. So mine are usually like 6,000 pixels wide. And if I do a PNG, I usually tick transparent background. So if I have anything that has no background, um, it will be transparent and it helps a lot with foliage of trees. Um, if I have any in the model that I want to use, then this helps a lot. So hit OK and then export. So this takes a moment until it's saved. There we go. So for the next file we will need, we go to view, face style and hidden line. Don't worry, everything is still here. We just tick on the edges. So there's all your, the, all your stuff. Um, some, some things will not show up. That's just because um, the objects are not modeled correctly. So we will have to tick on profiles and there we go. Um, the background is still light blue, which we do not want. So you have these little buttons here in the style window. You go to the third button and there you can change the color of the background. And we will just put it to white. So there we go. That looks way better. Go back to the first button. If you have a model that has a lot of stuff in the foreground and in the background, you can and should make use of the 3D space. So you can tick on this little box here, which is just the depth. It makes everything that is closer to the camera have thicker lines than which is further away from the camera. Um, in SketchUp itself, it looks a little not so nice, <laughs> especially if I go in and put it up to eight. It looks horrible, but the size of the image that we will export from this is 6,000 pixels wide, as you remember. So setting this to eight is not that big of a deal with an image of that size, and it will look way smoother in the exported image. So this will be our line art file. And to export that, we go again to file, export, 2D graphics. We don't need to change the size this time because it's still on 6,000 pixels. We will, oh, where's our other file? There we go, our temperate, a temp file, and we will call this file lines just so we know which one is which, <laughs> even though it's pretty obvious. And then hit export. And there we go. Now, uncheck these. Also, maybe uncheck this one. Um, because the fewer lines you have the computer generate, um, the smoother SketchUp will run. So if you do something really heavy on the processor right now, which is doing the shadows, um, it's advisable to, to just uncheck the lines. The third image we will export is the shadow layer. 
Sometimes you will have models where you can't really export a shadow layer because you have no point in the room where the light can come in. However, in this model, I have two sides of the room that have windows. So I will show you how to do the shadows as well. So if I click this little button here in the shadow tab, then the program will generate shadows in the model. This might take a little while because it's, it's a little heavy on the processor. And we see here that I seem to not have a ceiling, but I think I made one. I just have to, to show it again. Where is it? Ceiling? See, there it is, here. And there we go. Now, the light is coming... Where is it? It's, it's coming from, I think, where the camera is. Um, but I want more light in the room, so I'm gonna move around these two sliders here, which is the daytime and the date. And I think something like, let's make it August. Early morning is okay. Maybe, maybe a little earlier. And by the way, moving sliders by dragging them along doesn't work that well, especially if you don't have a super computer. Um, so I usually click somewhere in this bar where I want uh, the slider to go. I'm not all that happy yet, so let's see if I can make it better. Oh, this is nice. I like this one. Yeah, this one's cool. So sometimes you will have things in your model that have no shadows, like these panes here. This is because they're glass, so they don't they don't have shadows. It's the same with this window here. The glass itself does not have shadows, so if you absolutely do not want them, you can go into the model, double click a few times so you get this pane and then or this panel and then just fill it with another color. Um, because if you go in and change the glass color, it might change the glass color of this one as well, so you can't see outside. So it's better to just double click a few times, uh, get this panel, this pane, this glass pane, and just fill it with another color via the bucket, and then you're good to go. Um, for me, I, it's, it's okay. I think I like it the way it is, so I will just go and maybe turn the light all the way up and then I go to file export 2d graphic the same as before call it shadow and export and with this we're done in SketchUp but before you go and close the application go and turn off the shadows go to view face style and then shadows with textures so you can see what's in the model again, and then you close it, maybe save it if it asks you, because if you save it with the shadows on, it will take a lot longer to load the next time you open the file. So next up is a neat little program that is called PhotoSketcher, which is also free, as I said in the beginning of the video. However, you can gift a little coffee or two to the maker, as I have done several times. Don't mind the bird, this is just the, the preview picture that PhotoSketcher opens up on. So now we go to our files and take the texture piece and open it. On the left is always the original and on the right will be your outcome after you put your filters on the picture. Actually, if I work on my backgrounds for my comics, then I will use a filter in Photoshop. However, this filter is paid for, so I thought we'd use a free alternative already. Um, I do use PhotoSketcher for other things because it has some really, really nice filters. And depending on the style of your comic, um, this might be just even better for you. So when you open a picture, an image, then the, the editor opens up itself or by default. And here you have plenty of filters to pick from. I usually use something like watercolors or this one, the third one. It's a painterly third one. Um, it's pretty good for comics. Oil is also very nice. So to see what it does, you can just pick it and then see here in the preview window what it would look like. You can zoom in a little bit. 
and you see it has some really nice filters and brush strokes. They don't fit my style, but it's it's pretty nice for someone who has a more sketchy style. Watercolor as well is pretty nice. Doesn't fit my style, but it is a very nice filter. You can also go and fiddle around a little bit with the sliders to make it less pronounced. Maybe have the effect a little less. Maybe I will use this. <laughs> so after fiddling around with it a little bit, I think I will use the, the, the watercolor filter for this one. It's not much of a difference, but if I say draw right now, you will see pretty quickly why I do this. So why are we doing this? It's just to make the textures look a little less generated um, in a 3D program, just so that it looks a little more hand-drawn without draw having to draw in too much. Because at some point in your career, it's not about how much you painted yourself, but more about how economically you work. Because there's a lot that goes into making a comic and backgrounds should not be the thing that takes up 80% of your time. So you can see now the difference. It's it's quite subtle, I think, <laughs> but it does make the whole picture look a little more hand-drawn than it was before. So now we go and save this. PhotoSketcher by default puts a little PhotoSketcher at the end of your file names. You can either do that or you can just overwrite this file because we don't really need this one anymore. So we go and overwrite this. It will ask, will you really overwrite this? Say OK. And this is everything we have to do in PhotoSketcher. Now let's go to Clip Studio for a second. Let's open up all three of our files and we're going to build up the background on our texture file. So we're going to go select everything, copy everything and paste it into our background. Same with the shadows. Just select everything, copy everything, go back to the textures file and then paste everything. So we can close these. Now Clip Studio has a very, very neat little feature, which is under edit. And if you go all the way down here, there's a little button that says convert brightness to opacity. If I hit that, Everything that is white on the layer will just become transparent. So we do the same with the line art layer. Go to edit, convert brightness to opacity. And we have basically already a picture with line art and shadows, but not really what we want right now. Let's put away the shadows, the shadows for now. So we do have a line art. So this is the line art that we exported from SketchUp, but it's not really pretty, is it now? because it's, it's pixelated and it looks, again, same as with the textures. It looks very generated by a 3D application, which of course it is, but we don't want the look to be so obvious, which is why we will go over to Illustrator now. In Illustrator, we will open a new file or a new canvas and make it fairly large. I usually have it on 400 millimeters to 250 millimeters or was it an inch? Like 15 to 9 inch. And hit OK. And then you go to File, Place and take the line image and place it. It will be very big. However, we can go up here. This is the width of the uh, image we just imported. So we just go 400 millimeters. As the canvas is 400 millimeters, hit Enter and it fits perfectly. So now we do a little Illustrator magic. As I said in the beginning, if you're using a different program from Illustrator, you will have to see how exactly this program does what I will do now in Illustrator. I, I think some vector programs don't do this or don't have this function. However, some free uh, vector programs do have this function. You just have to find it. In Illustrator, you go to Object, trace and then trace options with these little dots and then you get a new window the whole left side you can leave as is 
And on the right side, you have these three little boxes. And I usually go and type in four, five, six, because those work well with what I want. And so if you put in your numbers, you just go to trace and then watch the magic happen. There. It looks a little weird right now, but I'm going to go in for you so you see what exactly happened here. There. Let me go back for a second. This is what it looked before. You see, very pixelated, very technical, very generated. Some some are even grayish, and we, we don't want that. That looks that looks horrid. So, if you go to trace, trace options, blah blah, blah do the four, five, six. There we go. Trace the whole thing. And this is the result. It looks. A little funky but this is exactly what I wanted you can see it especially here those lines are not straight anymore this is a little wobbly like someone drew it by hand and this is exactly what I wanted also this is really thick here why is it th that way I don't know ask illustrator but it looks good it looks like someone drew this by hand and this is what I wanted so this is the illustrator magic also if you just placed your image you have this little trace box up here with a drop-down menu and there are some presets that come with Illustrator and these two down here, those are mine. You can save your own presets and this is the, the same that I just showed you. It's the 456 one. Um, so you don't have to always go via the menu and put in everything by hand. You can just save the preset and then go to the drop-down menu click on this one and it will automatically use the numbers that you saved. So if you have this, you go to file and not to save because Illustrator does not save um, JPEGs or PNG or TIFF. It just saves AI files or EPS files. So we go to export. And because we've been always working in PNG before, we will work in PNG again and because I do not want these lines anymore I'll just save over them just overwrite them there we go and as I said before I always try to make my files printable and so I will save this as a 500 dpi PNG it will take a little time but it's worth it so and with this we're done in Illustrator back to our file in Clip Studio I will leave the old lines for now because I want to show you again how different they look from the ones we just made in Illustrator. But we will open our Illustrator lines and you can see as I save them as PNG or export them as PNG with transparency on, we save the little step of doing the edit um, convert brightness to opacity because these are the lines only. So we just go select everything, copy, then you can close this and then paste this. Now, of course, this is a different size from before, so it doesn't fit properly or it doesn't align there directly. But if you go in and fit it to the canvas like this, it will fit your picture again, your image. You just have to make sure that the the edges really, really align with the with the file you have already. So that you best zoom in and see that all the edges align and they don't right now. So I'll fix that by going around and fit all the edges. There we go. Then hit enter and I wish everything should align. There we go. That looks good, doesn't it? So again, if I zoom in now a little bit, you can see that the lines are a little wobbly and everything. And it looks, it looks way more hand drawn than the other lines do. For example, there we go. Of course, these lines from SketchUp are a lot thinner than the ones we just did in Illustrator. But if we, even if we go in here and change the width of the lines via the correct line filter, adjust line width, 
like this. It still looks weird and bad and this here is, is has a weird pixelated gray border and it, it just doesn't look really good. So I think it looks better like this. Of course, if you like the the generated technical look of the SketchUp lines, of course you can do that too. SketchUp also has styles, which I do not use, um, that change the look of the lines. But um, as I said, this is not an overall tutorial about how to do it best with SketchUp. It's just how I do it and I like the look of the vector lines best. So now I can go, after showing you how it looks, I can go and just finally delete this. <laughs> there we go. So now we have our base texture layer that looks a little more painted and we have our line art layer, um, which is basically fine. You can go in, however, and fix some mistakes like these couch cushions. <laughs> I would go in usually and draw the lines around the textures so that it doesn't really just suddenly break off. There are no lines because in SketchUp it, these this couch, couch cushion just clipped into the couch itself and the other cushions, but this is just a small thing. Also, I don't like these lines and just, let's just delete them. So you sometimes have to go in and fix some lines, but it's better than having to completely draw uh, the background by hand. Again, this is not about who draws it best or who does the most work on their backgrounds, but who works the most efficient because there's already so much work going into comics. This is not this is not a contest. It shouldn't be a contest. As long as the the result looks good and tells a story. There we go. Now the couch cushion looks good again. For now, let's leave it at that and take care of the shadows. So we have our shadow layer here and right now it's still gray, but to make it look a little more comic-y, a little more pretty and give your, your background a nice emotion and flair. So you go in, make a new layer and set it to clip. So it's a clipping layer now, this little red bar here means that this layer only affects anything that is on this layer. So if I go in now, pick a nice color, like a bluish violet, a little grayish blue violet, there we go. And then if I fill the whole canvas or the whole layer with this color, it will only affect the shadows as you can see. Right now the shadows are set to normal, but we do want to set the layer mode to multiply so that the colors of the shadows mix with the colors of the texture layer. So this looks way better than before, right? <laughs> if I hide the color layer now, this is before and this is with the color layer. Of course you can go in and if it's, if it's too bright, because that's, that's what it is right now, it is too bright. You can change the color and just fill the layer again. Oh wait, wrong, wrong layer. <laughs> fill the layer again, there we go the clipping layer. You can also go into the clipping layer and do a gradient like this. Just whoop, a little bit of, of pink, of reddish pink, because the sun, I don't know, maybe the sun is going down <laughs> and that's why there's a little, or maybe go do some brown or orange brown like this. That is a very nice gradient. Okay, we can leave it at that, I think. That, that looks good. Um, there Again, you have to go in there and do a little bit of touch-up because here these, they don't really look good. So let's go in there and erase some of this. 
because it is a comic it doesn't have to be exactly correct it doesn't have to be super super correct it doesn't have to be realistic so you can go in and delete some of these little stray shadows that you really don't need like this here you have the overall shape of the light on the couch so you can just go in and make it a little bigger or fill it completely with shadow that's also an option it's just a little touch up but again it's easier to do it this way than to completely do it by hand from scratch also here these paints they now that i have colored everything they don't really look good this is not a problem really but this really looks bad so as this shadow is not completely black i will have to go in if i go in and draw it black now it, it does this i don't want this so to make sure you can go in and just draw into your shadows just just duplicate the layer once or twice just right click on the layer itself and they then say duplicate layer let's do it twice so it gets really black and then just merge them and then set it to multiply again and if it's too dark you can always always go and set the opacity a little lower but now you can go in and draw with black without there being a problem that the color is too dark so i'm gonna fill these panes with black Oop, there we go that looks way better i can't do that here but it's not as bad as this one because this was really it was like there was a lamp inside this this cupboard and it looked really weird so this is the base and the base is basically haha done um of course we have the problem with the flowers or with the plants uh, still so i would go in and make a new layer and go and have some plants this brush in particular has the setting that it has a filling so um, the first color will be the outline color and the second color will be the filling so it's i set it to white because i will use the convert brightness to opacity again later can't have it bigger okay then i will just transform it a little bigger like this i will color this later but for now to be able to color the lines of this little patch of grass i will have to um to do it in black and white first there put that in there cover up as much for of the the old plant as possible you can just also leave out the plants if you want to if you don't want to cover up anything so i will now go and select this because it's so far in the foreground that most of it is not shaded at least in the this one here you see only the tips are have shadows so i will try to emulate that with this one as well and then we go to the to the shadow layer and just delete the shadow like this there we go maybe a little more yeah that's good turn down the opacity a little bit so we can see what you're doing and then you can just erase the part of this plant that goes over the planter now i can go and convert the brightness to opacity here this layer is the color layer um, so you have to select this one and delete the lines of your original line layer this sounds super convoluted but it's it's really easy <laughs> There we go. Just so you ha don't have any lines from the background inside of your plants. I will not show you the other plants yet because uh, this is not a tutorial on how to draw plants. <laughs> this is just an example on how to change small things, small details like plant and, and, and stuff like that. What we also will do and what you should do is add some, some details, some lighting details. For example, make a new layer, set it to add glow, and then take some color you'd like. Oh, what, what do we, we, we're gonna take some nice orange color, but don't, don't make it too bright. Don't, don't do this or, or this. Don't make it this light because if you do it, it will be extremely bright. You're better off with taking something like this because if you, if you, if you use this 
it's still bright enough. We don't want, want super shiny highlights um, except on spaces that are like metal. If you have something that's chrome, then yes, <laughs> you can pick the brightest highlight you want. But on spaces that aren't as extremely shiny, you can just take a darker color. I like the darker pencil better for highlights than, than the G pen because it has softer edges. And it adds to itself. So you can go in and do some, some highlights in the background. I'm just doing it random right now. It looks a little weird right now, but this is the nature of any tutorial video, I think. I'm sitting weirdly at my desk right now as well, because I'm trying to not hit my microphone. <laughs> See here, that's metal, that's chrome, so we can go bright. So that looks really shiny. There we go. <laughs> also, this can also be a little more shiny because this is also chrome. So little details like that, like those lights and everything, make backgrounds look instantly more hand-drawn and better than if you leave them. Like if I if I hide them now, you see this, mm, it's okay, but this is way better. This looks way livelier and more real, not realistic, but in the comic sense real. I'm really not happy about this grass here in the foreground, so I'm gonna try and make it look a little softer. Maybe try and have some some depth in here, like... Okay, there we go. <laughs> now it looks good. This looks way better than before. <laughs> no, because now it looks just out of focus because it's so far in the foreground. It was so bright and so sharp and the lines were so thick, it um, completely took away the focus from the rest of the picture. And now that it's blurred out, the viewer looks more to this space here because I have added all these little details and uh, and everything so even though this is the place that's most in the shadows because there are these little details um you immediately are drawn to this part here so this could be your background you could also though go in and use a little nice auto action that you can download um, in the clip asset store which is called line color pretty easy to <laughs> remember if you go to your line art layer and then hit the auto action button, it will use everything but the line art layer to color your line art. But don't be afraid, your line art will be untouched. There will just be a, a layer added on top of your line art layer, set to be a clipping layer to color your line art. It looks a bit chaotic at first, but don't worry. It'll all make sense in the end. And done. <laughs> you see now the auto action has made another layer that is clipped to your line art layer. And if I hide this, the line art goes back to black. And if I unhide it, the line art is, is just a little colored. It's just a little. But you can see it if you move in. You see here the lines are a little brownish. And here's a little, a little violet. And here's a little green from these planes. And also the lines here are now green and not black. It's subtle, but it makes everything look better. It puts everything more together and make a consistent a nice looking background for a comic. However, if you use this auto action, you will have to use the auto action as well on your character line art because otherwise the characters will look weird and out of place if the line art of the background is colored, but the line art of your characters is not. So yeah, with this, your background is basically done and you don't even have to copy and paste the layers one by one into your panel. You can go and select all the layers that you have here, copy them, like just hit Ctrl C to copy them. So let's make a new file and now I can hit Ctrl E and you see all the layers that I had are in here again. Of course, now this image is way smaller than the one I had before, but I can just again select all these layers and transform them. And there we go. This way you can just 
fit the whole image with everything in it, line art and shadows and all, into your panel the way you need them to. So this was the basics for how I do backgrounds for colored comics with the help of SketchUp. I hope it helped some of you. If you liked the video, like it, maybe subscribe because there are more tutorials coming. If you have any critique or commentary or any questions about anything I said in this video, write a comment below because I will be sure to get back to you. And with that said, happy comics making. Bye!